if we're going to begin to answer the question why, why are we here, um, that there's, there's a, a big answer to that and a little answer to that. Yes. And nice. the big answer is we're here to grow yes. and learn. Yes. Um, and, and, some, and there are some very important big things that we're here to learn to do. And, and one of them is to learn how to love. Mm -hmm. and, and, and not just learn how to love, because love is available to us in the life between lives. Uh, right. Right. But we have to learn to love in a, in a physical universe mm -hmm. in which there's so much pain. Mm -hmm and in which there's, there, there's so many obstacles to the expression and experience of love, we have to have, our task here is to learn how to love in the face of pain. Mm, yes. and, um, and that key mission uh, in, in, in some ways overarches mm. everything else that we're doing, that we, we've come to learn that, and we can only learn that in a physical environment. We can only learn that uh, in, in a place w with lots of pain and obstacles. Mm. And that, and that the key part of this environment that's so necessary for our growth is the pain itself. Yes. 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 And, and so, so that's the, the, sort of the big statement of, of why we're here. But then there's a particular individual task yes. and mission that also is important, vital, that we know what it is. Yes. And, and much of what we were writing about is, is pathways to learn and find out about that individual mission that we've arrived here with. Yes. So the last year I was in the seminary, I was in the seminary for eight years pre pre preparing for priesthood. And the last year they did a special technique with us, which is called community development, where they teach you how to go into a third world country, remote area, and analyze what the problems are, what the resources are, who the leaders are, what the needs are, figure out, you know, some kind of a project, a short term goals, long term objectives, you know, action plans. So I got to Kenya in 1972, 26 years of age, I'm li literally on the equator, literally living on the equator in a very remote area. And one day, I'm six months there, and uh, I'm in a meeting with the elders, and I'm kind of doing my shtick and saying, you know, here's the, you know, the issues I see here, and here are the problems we face, and here are the resources we have, and here's the leadership, and here's a possible project, and I'm going through, you know, do my stuff. And I see this old man sitting, you know, we're outside, sitting on a rock, with this bemused look on his face. And so I, f I finally catch his eye, and he says to me, can I ask you a question? We're talking in Swahili. So, you know, I'm 26, I'm Irish, I know everything. So I said, I'm sure. So he says, can you tell me why is it that for you Europeans, your only response to a problem is to want to solve it? <laughs> and it cracked me up. I think, you know, it sounds like a Zen koan. <laughs> what do you do with a problem except solve it? So I'm totally stuck. So I said to him, well, what do you do with the problem? And I'll never forget what he said. We're talking in Swahili, but more or less what he said to me was, he said, a problem is an invitation to self-transcendence. Mm. And if all you do is solve the problem, life will just give you another problem. And it's one of the wisest things I've ever heard because mm -hmm. that is, that's what life is about. It's offering us the possibility of self-transcendence from learning through the vicissitudes and the difficulties of you know, health issues and interpersonal dynamics and all these things. But they're all invitations to grow and to evolve. It's not just about solving problems or about avoiding pain or about embracing pleasure are being powerful or prestigious. It's about this, you know, this, self, this growth and self-transcendence. And in fact, <coughs> we now know from the research in Life Between Lives that, that we agree to certain right. kinds right. of obstacles, right. certain kinds of uh, tra uh, challenges, right. uh, and even certain kinds of very painful conditions mm -hmm. uh, in order to grow in the way that we need to grow. It's, it's kind of our curriculum right. that we, we come here. This, exactly. this, is, this, is, this is our path. Uh, toward growth mm -hmm. and then we agree and it's, it's sort of hard to imagine that a person would agree to pain mm -hmm. but our drive to grow and learn is so intense mm -hmm. that we agree to some very difficult conditions on this earth totally. so, so that we can find out and learn the things that we came here totally. to get. Yeah. And I think that's the real meaning of karma. I mean karma I think is constantly misunderstood as some kind of a, a punitive mechanism whereby I'm punished in subsequent lifetimes for decisions or sins of previous lifetimes. I don't think it has anything to do whatsoever with the punishment. It's an educative function. It's, you know, it's, the, it's the great scientific principle par excellence. Science says you do, you do A and B happens. Do you like B? Yeah, keep doing A. Do you not like B? I don't like B, stop doing A. That science proceeds by looking at cause and effect and that, that's basically what, what we're here to do. Some things work and they create you know, internal harmony or external peace and some things create chaos you know, interpersonally or in, intrapsychically. And so it's a real interesting feedback mechanism. 
that you know we're constantly being told by our, the, the consequences of our choices, you know, whether or not it's good for us or good for society. And we learn every bit as much from the mistakes, Absolutely. from the disasters, Absolutely. from the choices that ended tragically, right. as we do right. from from the choices that ended with a great sense of, oh yes, this is mission, this, is, this is the direction I need to go. Uh, which is why we need many lives. Absolutely. Absolutely. Because yeah. there are, a sim single life is not nearly enough yeah. to make all the choices yeah. a conscious soul can make totally. and learn from them. Totally. Uh, and, and so we, we, we have to be scientists a long time right. and examine a lot of different lives and a lot of right. different circumstances and a lot of different obstacles and challenges uh, as we gather the wisdom we came here to get. It's like there's a fractal nature to it. You know, fractals are uh, patterns that repeat at different scales. Mm -hmm. And so, in a sense, every night you go, I go to bed and I sleep, I wake up and it's a new lifetime. You know, as much as it, at the end of a cycle of, you know, 90 or 100 years uh, following uh, an in-between lifetime space. So every time I wake up, it's a new lifetime. I get an experiment to do it a little bit differently and to learn something different this time. So there's the daily uh, kind of uh, fractal and then there's kind of the yearly cycle and then maybe there's the lifetime cycle. And so there, each of these are feeding back on each other. Mm -hmm. And for me, the great, um, the great mission of Homo sapiens sapiens at this stage is that you know, when you look at the trajectory, the evolutionary trajectory, where we went from a physiosphere, which is just a rock, you know, to the first life forms, single cellular uh, cell creatures, to multicellular organisms, to you know, amphibians and then reptiles, and then the mammals introduce emotion to it, and humans introduce uh, thinking to it. I think our great challenge at this stage is to make the jump from free will to freedom. You know, free will is the ability to do as I, as I please. Freedom is the ability to do as pleases source, in the sense that the only truly free person is the person who's choosing the good, who's mm. choosing to bring compassion and love into a situation. And to the extent that I'm not choosing that, I'm addicted to something, whether it's my ego or you know, our relationship or whatever. And so it really feels to me that the great mission of the human species at this point in the evolution trajectory is to make that transition from free will choices to freedom choices. And the karma and the feedback mechanism and the, the four stages you mentioned, you know, for the observation and the recording and the evaluation and the decision, the choice making, that's, you know, that's core to it, that transition from free will to freedom. Mm. It, it, we are here to love. We are, we are here yeah. to be connected. Uh, and, and to love in spite of all of the obstacles to love, to be uh, able to, to reach toward each other, to see each other, to validate each other, to care for each other, to know each other, uh, even though pain keeps showing up. We come here to learn a very particular thing and we've put ourselves in circumstances and, and, and created, created uh, likely events in our lives that would allow us to learn those key things. And so, and we're here to learn something and do something. And I, and I think, and that's very particular to this life, to this particular mission, as opposed to this overarching, we're here to be connected and love. That's how I'm kind of thinking about right, it. Right. So maybe I'd finish with another uh, kind of an image, another metaphor. <clears throat> um, was it Forrest Gump that said, my old mother said, life is like a box of chocolates. You never know what you're going to get. For me, um, life is like a jigsaw puzzle. Mm -hmm. And I said, people constantly, when you, you buy a jigsaw puzzle in the shop and you come home, and you tear off the plastic and you open the box and turn all the pieces out onto the table. You have to believe that everything that's there is necessary and everything that's necessary is there. Mm. There are no extra pieces and there's no, you're not going to have to go back to the shop and buy four more pieces to complete the puzzle. So that all of the experiences of our life are part of the, the puzzle, the jigsaw puzzle of our lives. But there are clues, you know, when you're putting a jigsaw puzzle together. You know, certainly most people will find, identify the four corner pieces first and then the straight edges. So people have to know what are the four corner pieces. And I think for us in this book, it was identifying you know, inadequate cosmologies, uh, creating better ones, you know, looking at the hints that will tell you what your particular mission is, and then fourthly, practices. So we give four corner pieces, and then you try to find, you know, the straight edges that will kind of circumscribe your purpose. Looking at your skill set, the, um, the, the six great paths that Ralph talked about, and then you got two cl two clues. You got the contours of the remaining pieces, and you got the colors, and you have to try to make sure they get together. That you're not artificially forcing pieces together because the colors look good, but the contours don't quite match. The courage to realize that sometimes. We create sections of the puzzle of our life, you know, by um, pressurizing things together that don't belong together, and have the courage then to say, you know what, 
that's not working, I need to do it differently, dismantle these pieces mm -hmm. and redo it. And the greatest clue of all, of course, is the picture on the cover of the box. If I'm not looking at the picture, it's really, really difficult to uh, figure out what the puzzle is about and how to assemble it. And the, p the picture on the box, I always think, is, is a unique face of God. It's the face of God that looks like Matt McKay. It's the face of God that looks like Andia. It's the face of God that looks like my dog Kayla. And so every one of us is trying to assemble this puzzle, but mostly in society, we have no idea what picture is on the, on the cover. And we're assembling you know, a jigsaw puzzle, not knowing what we're trying to, what the final product is going to look like. So having some vision of um, the, the purpose and the mission so that as I put the pieces in place, I'm operating according to some kind of a, a pre-envisaged you know, uh, uh, face of guide in, in a particular case.